So I recently got the question of why something would show up in side imaging, specifically in this black area of side imaging, or on your down view screen, but it would not show up on your 2D sonar. Huge thanks to our sponsor, Two More Cast Tackle Box subscription. When you sign up for your very first month for just $1, you can get a pack of these baits. These are the Euro Tackle B Vibes. I use these pretty much year round for crappie and bluegill. They're a great bait, and you can get them right now when you click the top link in the video description and sign up for just $1. So go ahead and click the link in the video description. So this comment actually came from a video I did four or five years ago. It was on a different manufacturer sonar unit, and that was an old model. So that model only had two frequency settings with 2D sonar. So let's pull up our 2D sonar screen here. I want to explain something about frequency settings. Most modern sonar has something called chirp. See if they hit this chirp button here. Typically it's about 19 degrees. It might vary from model to model, but chirp is a multi-frequency emitting sonar. So basically it sends out multiple frequencies at one time and then gives you a pretty darn clear image. When it came to the older models, usually they only had two frequencies, 83 kilohertz and 200 kilohertz. 83 kilohertz was a one-to-one -one ratio of the lake bottom. So if you notice here on the bottom right side of my screen on my A scope, which is my amplitude meter, it says 4.7 feet. Right now, it is telling me that the cone on the river bottom, my 2D sonar cone, is reading 4.7 feet in diameter. On the older models, when you had it to 83 kilohertz, it was reading a one-to-one -one ratio. So I'm at about 11 and a half feet. It's gonna show me a diameter of 11 and a half feet. But with 200 kilohertz, it's showing me one-third the width of the total depth. So at 11, we'll call it 12 feet to make the math easy. 12 feet, one-third the width, that's four feet in diameter. So it's a much narrower of a cone on the lake bottom or on the river bottom. Then to complicate things, as you move up the water column, so for instance, I'm in about 12 feet of water, on a normal 200 kilohertz setting, I'd be seeing four feet in diameter of the lake bottom or the river bottom, but if I wanted to see a fish suspended up at six feet, I have to, that fish has to be within a two foot diameter cone because it's one third of the total depth that I want to look at because as you go up towards the transducer, that cone gets a lot narrower with 2D sonar. Now with down imaging, your down view and your side view screens here, it's a much wider beam. It's not a cone. Your down view here is actually a much more of a thin beam going to the left and right of the boat, just a little bit. It's not quite like side imaging, but it does go further left and right of the boat than your typical 2D sonar does. So what happened was in this video, I was using side imaging and I saw a school of fish suspended pretty high in the water column, I think, in this black area on side imaging. Now on down imaging, they showed up, but because the 2D sonar cone was set to 200 kilohertz, I think that's typically what I ran on that unit, this, the fish were suspended up high enough that the cone did not actually see them. They, they didn't pass through the cone and they didn't show up on 2D sonar. So that's something to take into account when you are using your 2D sonar down view and your side view screens. I'm gonna go back over a wing dam here. I gotta drift backwards. Once we get set up with that, I'm gonna show you kind of what this all looks like. All right, we're gonna come up on a wing dam here pretty soon. And I just wanna show you kind of the difference of what some of these rocks will look like on side view, down view, and your 2D sonar. I don't think there's gonna be fish suspended above them, whereas the case in this video, these fish, I was fishing fairly deep, if I remember right, 15, 20 feet, and these fish were suspended pretty high up in the water column. This typically happens, uh, I think it was more of a summertime pattern. It might've been in the fall. Uh, but here on the right, we got the wing dam coming up. We're going kind of slow. If I'm only going one mile an hour, so it's gonna look like it's stretched. The image is stretched as I go faster. You notice the rocks got a lot clearer on these wing dams. There might be some fish on the front side of it. But if you notice on the down imaging screen versus, I'm gonna pause everything here. 
versus my 2D sonar, the down imaging, you can definitely tell there's separation between some of these rocks, all right? And there might be a couple fish on each side of it. But on the 2D sonar screen, you're gonna notice that it's, there's a little bit of separation, but not much. Um, 2D sonar is great with suspended fish if you can get them in, the two, in that actual cone angle of 2D sonar. You notice there's some marks on the front side of here and on the back side of this wing dam. Down imaging is great when you're trying to separate fish from rocks or the lake bottom or the river bottom or if you're fishing brush piles and then obviously side imaging is, side imaging is just a great tool. Uh, where's the pause button? Great tool to see the depth in terms of what I'm actually looking at. So this wing dam stretches, it stretches much further right to my right all the way to the shoreline to help break up this current. Um, but to answer this person's question, be sure you're understanding what the cone angle is that you're using. So what frequency that you're using. For instance, I'm using the uh, chirp frequency. It's a nine degree. If I actually move this, you can see my frequency. 19 degree, or I'm sorry, it's a 19 degree, which according to this is 186 kilohertz at the top of my screen. If I would go up to 18 degrees, that's 199, which is basically a 200 kilohertz, which in the video that you saw with the, the old unit, that's probably what I was using. As I widen out my cone angle, the frequency goes down in number. And with the wider cone angle, you are seeing more of the river bottom. With a narrow cone angle, you're seeing less of the river bottom. Um, usually, if you're in a situation where you're trying to fix, or trying to, I guess, adjust your 2D sonar beam angle, it's because you're fishing shallow water versus deep water. Shallower water, you want to see more, so you're using a higher beam frequency, or higher beam degree, a lower frequency number, 83 kilohertz, for example. If you're fishing deeper water, you're using a narrower beam angle, higher frequency, in this case, 230 kilohertz. Uh, and again, there's the wing dam right there. Typically, that's used in deeper water applications. Most people just set it to chirp right here, and you're good. And I mean, that's pretty much all I use 2D Sono for now. On most modern units, have this chirp function, but that is the reason why uh, schooled fish suspended up in the water column were not showing up on 2D Sonar versus seeing them on side imaging or seeing them on my down view. So. Hopefully that answered your question in the comment section. So if you got any more comments about sonar units or anything like that, you can post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I always appreciate hearing from you. Um, yeah, this is, this is why 2D sonar is a great tool for what it is, but side imaging or side view and down view, phenomenal tools uh, for a lot of different applications and it's always why I suggest if you're going to buy a sonar unit for your first time make sure even if it's an older one on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace make sure it has all three of these and it should have at least you know some sort of mapping system so appreciate you watching we'll see you in the next one